This is part five in a series called The Real Bible Codes. We encourage you to watch the previous four videos as well for some astounding revelation from God's Word. The Hebrew language is among the oldest upon the earth. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Aleph. The last and the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Ta. Interestingly, Jesus refers to himself as the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, or the beginning and the end, several times each in the book of Revelation. Referring to himself as the Alpha and the Omega is the same as saying in English, I am the A to the Z. If he used the Hebrew letters to represent this idea, he would have said, I am the Aleph and the Ta. Interestingly, the Aleph and the Ta appear throughout the Old Testament as an untranslated two-letter word. In other words, the two letters mysteriously appear side by side as one word in several unique places in the Bible. Yet these two letters side by side as one word have no meaning, seemingly no purpose in the text, yet they are there. This two-letter word is called the Aith in the Hebrew. It is simply the Aleph and the Ta together. According to the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon of the Hebrew Old Testament, there are 22 identified occurrences of the translated Aith from the Hebrew word Aleph Ta that are not translated in any way. 22 occurrences. Coincidentally, or perhaps not by coincidence at all, there are also exactly 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet as well. The Strong's Hebrew Dictionary and Concordance defines the Aith, number 853, as probably deriving from number 225, Auth, which means a signal or a sign or a monument marker. Since Jesus clearly identifies himself in the New Testament as the first and the last, using the first and the last letters of the alphabet, then the Aleph Ta would literally represent Jesus himself or Yeshua since he himself said that this was a biblical description of his person. Amazingly, the first verse in the Old Testament that has this untranslated Aleph Ta, or the Aith in it, is Genesis 1.1. In the English, that verse reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But in the original Hebrew, it literally reads like this, In the beginning created God the heavens and the earth. Notice the appearance of the two-letter word, aith. So it would literally read in the Hebrew, In the beginning created God, who is Jesus, Yeshua, aith, the Aleph Ta, the heavens and the earth. Another amazing verse that includes the Aith, or the Aleph Ta, right after the name of God, is found also in Genesis. It is chapter 2, verse 7. In the King James, it reads like this, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The literal Hebrew reads like this, And formed Yahweh God, Aeth, man from the dust. Or in other words, And formed Yahweh God, who is Jesus Yeshua, the Aleph and the Ta, man from the dust. Now look at this astounding passage. In Zechariah chapter 12, verses 10 through 11, the Bible says, And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look upon me, the one whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. The phrase in the middle of verse 10 says, They shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Amazingly, in the original Hebrew, the aith is found right after the word me. So in other words, in the Hebrew, this passage of scripture would be stated this way. And God said, they will look upon me, aith, aleph ta, who is Jesus Yeshua, whom they have pierced. Was this untranslated word placed throughout the Old Testament by the Spirit of God himself as a sign or a code for our generation that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, God with us, and the creator of the universe and man himself? That it was God in the flesh on that cross who was pierced for us? It certainly appears that this is exactly 
what the Lord Yahweh has done for us.